Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise, for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video. And I post new videos every Wednesday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. And I do that through book reviews, book hauls, Bible studies, Bible chat, and all types of discussions. So as the title says, this is going to be my September wrap-up and my October TBR. I normally like to do them in separate videos with, me, with the new change of me posting once a week, I decided to just put those um, together in a video. So, we're going to start with my wrap-up. Um, I have one book that I did not get to for September. And normally, I would have like a punishment read for the following month. But with virtual learning just starting, I, I just can't. So, um, the book that I didn't read was actually a wild card pick, if I'm not mistaken. This was the little card. You guys know that um, I decided to start incorporating this little jar. It's called the DOI TBR game. I don't really know what to call it. Basically, I had a bunch of little papers here with prompts on them. So, I picked out three. Um, normally, it's supposed to be four picks with an automatic fifth read because I always read a book from the uh, Left Behind series. But I had only did three picks because I knew September was going to be crazy and wild card was one of my picks if you guys can see um the only book i didn't read and it's knox by suzanne may warren right suzanne susan may warren and this is adult contemporary romance christian fiction and i just i didn't get a chance around to reading it and i didn't have an interest at the time to even pick it up to try to read it so it's gonna go back on my shelves and eventually i'll be able to pick it up again if the little jar lets me or the cup lets me so we have this book i did not get a chance to read Okay, so going with the other two picks. So the second one was read a book with a male perspective. Here is the little paper. And for that, I had um, Lynn Austin's Gods and Kings. This was really, really good. Um, I gave this book four star rating. I absolutely love the writing. I love the characters. I think that um, Hezekiah was phenomenal in this. I thought Uriah was interesting. I love the fact that Zechariah was in here as well. And I loved all of the additions of other prophets and seeing how they... Um, sometimes allow themselves to get caught up in compromising their faith and not fulfilling what God said. So this was really, really interesting to me. I truly enjoyed it and definitely will be picking up the other four books. This is a five book series, so I only had the first one. I definitely will be picking up the other four ones. So this was really, really great. I highly recommend it. And the last paper I had picked out said, read a book with a title 10 letters long which was funny but we have that one and for that Angela Hunt's Judah's Wife was the pick this is the second book in the Silent Year series I have not started her series so I didn't read book one prior to this I just picked up book two because they had 10 letters long and I ended up giving this a 4.25 star rating this was really really good I couldn't give it a full five because I wasn't fully invested in the characters but I enjoyed the romance I enjoyed the faith aspects I thought the characters were interesting I wasn't like invested in them enough to care too much but i also didn't dislike them i thought they were all well written um judah as well as leah are two of the main characters in the story they have a romance that goes on and it's really interesting now i don't know much about the maccabees i don't know much about all of that and I, I, I believe don't kill me guys i believe it's in the catholic bible though the maccabees in the book of judith i think it is and there's a whole bunch of other books i don't know them i've never cared to really learn about them but this made me interested in wanting to read them just to see what they're about um and this actually comes from one maccabee if i'm not mistaken let me look again she based these off of yeah one maccabees um in the catholic bible so uh this was really interesting like really really interesting to me i enjoyed the romance in this so much i thought it was so sweet i just didn't care for the miscommunication drama i'm one of those people who I don't mind miscommunication in a romance. Um, I read contemporary romances that are not like Christian fiction. I read secular ones. But for some reason, the trope of miscommunication, I don't care for. In this one, there was a lot of miscommunication in here. Um, Leah came from a very broken household, whereas Judah came from a very strong, um, faith-filled household. So seeing the two dynamics between them as they were married was quite interesting. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Gave it a 4.25 star rating. Definitely would recommend it. So this makes me want to go back and definitely read Egypt's Sister, which is the first book, and continue on. Because I do own the entire series. But we have this. 
The fourth and final book that I have is The Mark by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins. Um, this is the eighth book in the Left Behind series. And I know that someone had mentioned that I kind of had spoiled uh, the books for them. And I, I totally apologize for that. But one thing I want to say is when I talk about books, it's not that I purposely try to spoil them. I just, you guys can see my passion. I love books. I love discussing them, which is why a lot of the times I try to tell you guys not to watch my vlogs because my vlogs, my reading vlogs are very spoilery. But I'm trying to get into the habit of not doing that. Um, however, I will say with this series, um, maybe for me as a reader, because I know foreshadowing, the series does a lot of foreshadowing and it pretty much talks about what's going to happen. So it's just a matter of like which book certain things are going to take place. Um, so again, to that person, I definitely did apologize about that. But I just I like books and talking about them. So I'm not going to talk too much about the series from here on out because they are further in the book. So this is book eight. Um, I gave this four stars. Yes, I, gave, I had to look at my reading blog. I gave it four stars. Um, I enjoyed it. I was neither here nor there about it. Honestly, it would have probably been like a 3.5, 3.75, but I gave it four stars. Um, I love the Tribulation Force. Carpathia still annoys me, and that's that. And the last book that was on my TBR that I still did not finish. I feel like I didn't carry this book like for forever. Um, but it's okay. I'm giving myself grace with my reading because I know that things have been stressful. And I realized that this is a very meaty book. Um, the chapters are very dense and I don't want to rush through this book at all. And it's Resuscitating Evangelism by Jordan Easley and Ernest Easley. Yes, you guys have seen this book in multiple TBRs and wrap ups. And yeah, I am still reading this. I am still on chapter three, four, three, three. But it's okay because this is not a book I want to fly through. It's very much in depth. It's very much um, meaty and I want to take my time really experiencing and um, understanding what they are saying. So I'm not in a, I'm not going to rush myself to finish it this month in October, but um, you know, it's there. So I didn't finish it in September, nor did I finish it in August. But we're going to push this to October. So now we're just going to get into my October TBR. But before I do that, I am going to pick out... I don't know if I'm going to pick out three or two. Because I technically already have three books I need to read. So if I add two, that'll be five. But I'm I'm going to pick out three for this month. Um, But I'm not going to, you know, be upset if I don't complete it. Um, no punishment. So um, here's a little cup. And literally, it's just little prompts of like, read a book with green on the cover, read a book with a number in the title, something like that. So we're going to go in with this first one. Hopefully, it'll be nice to me and give me something easy. My shelves are so disorganized. They're not organized. Oh, yes. I love this. So read an aesthetically pleasing book. And I have a book for that that I'm already reading. So I'm kind of cheating with this but read an aesthetically pleasing book. I, I got a book for that. So that's the first one. Let me put these other ones to the side because I don't want to mix, mix those up. Um, so the third one. I have two. I'm going to drop that one and keep this one. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Read a read a book with a necklace on the cover. Oh, gosh. That's literally what this And it fell. Okay. But that's literally what this says. Read a book with a necklace on the cover. Oh, I don't know. I have to look look for something. Okay. All right. One more. I guess I'll pick up one more. Why not? So here is the third and final one. Um. Okay. Read a good... Read a good... Read a book about good versus evil. Read a book about good versus evil. So I'm going to go pick those books and then I will come back with my October TBR. Okay. So it took me some time to go find these books. <laughs> But I figured it out. So I'm going to go with the props. So for read an aesthetically pleasing book. There it is. Read an aesthetically pleasing book. I'm going to go with Pearl and Sam by Tessa Abstride. This is the 10th anniversary edition. I mean, this is aesthetically pleasing to me. I love the foiling. Like, if you follow me on um, Instagram, I don't raved about this book so many times. Took photos of it, posted it on IGTV, IG story. This book is everything. And um, not just the front is aesthetically pleasing, but that spine is aesthetically pleasing. The back is aesthetically pleasing. The inside is just as aesthetically pleasing. Let me just get to a chapter. 
the inside is aesthetically pleasing to me i just everything about this book is aesthetically pleasing so i was already reading this anyway because i am part of the launch team for this book for tessa afshar and i am so grateful to be a part of this launch team <laughs> no words so we know how i feel about pearl in the sand i will have a reading blog which you probably would have already seen so just click the on the screen to go watch the reading blog for this book but yes we have this baby okay so for the next prompt it is read a book about good versus evil and um that one i actually have two so this one is a definite desecration by tim lahay and jerry b jenkins's book nine in the left behind series we know i'm trying to finish this 13 book series before the end of the year and i'm almost there so um yeah we have this book and i cannot wait to dive headfirst into this and figure out what goes on next because um i didn't really care too much for book eight like book eight was good but it wasn't a lot of action so i'm hoping this one is a lot more action-packed um so we have desecration the other book I have as like a option as well is Nine by Rochelle Decker. Now Rochelle Decker is the daughter of Ted Decker and I read their um, co-author book The Girl Behind the Red Rope and that was so phenomenal. I'm also thinking about picking that book up too to read. I should. Ooh. I should probably read that book. So um, this one is written solely by um, Rochelle Decker and this one does not have a lot of of those like sort of supernatural horror-esque feels but it definitely is like a fall vibe it, they're definitely good versus evil and it has some slight connections to the girl behind the red rope now you guys know how i do i get a book i read it quickly don't annotate so i do want to reread this um if i'm not mistaken i did give it a four star rating when i read it quickly for my review uh but i do want to reread it and take the time to read it and it's just giving me those fall you know spooky isk vibes so um we have this and the next book i'm also going to read is the girl behind the red rope so i'm going to go grab that book real quick okay so here's the girl behind the red rope by ted decker and michelle decker um father daughter duo and i did read this i only tabbed uh three portions of the book i did did i annotate in this i don't think i fully annotated i think the only thing i was doing was like underlining my favorite quotes because i had to read it super fast yeah i only underlined certain things so i had to read it really fast for a review um i did do spray edges dye spray edges so i painted my edges in um black because the book itself is red with black writing but uh yeah this was really really good i thoroughly enjoyed it i think i gave it a 4.5 or 5 star rating really really great um if you're not into like the supernatural portions of like christian fiction don't read this this does have supernatural aspects can kind of somewhat lean toward horror um but this was so so good on the faith aspects and i just i loved it so much so i definitely want to read this or nine possibly both but the one that's gonna actually fulfill that kind of prompt is desecration because obviously good versus evil it's during the rapture we we have satan and we have god so yeah the next prompt was to read a book with a necklace on the cover so here it is um read a book with a necklace on the cover now for this i had i was struggling because you don't find many christian fiction books with a picture of a girl with a necklace on the cover um they're normally like close-ups of their face they're dressed in like biblical fiction like biblical era clothes or um olden era clothes and it was a struggle now there was a book that i am going to be reading with my sister stephanie that i thought she had a necklace on it unfortunately she does not and the when you see the cover i'll show you the cover in a second but when you see that book you would expect that she would wear a necklace on that outfit but she didn't so this one i'm kind of cheating it's not a necklace it's a choker um but this was like the only historical fiction that i cared to want to read and it's by liz curtis higgs and it's here burns my candle by liz curtis higgs this is christian historical fiction and if i'm not mistaken this is a historical retelling of the story of ruth if i'm not mistaken she has this one she also has a series um, that is a, bibli a historical retelling of the story of Rachel and Leah, which I do want to read that as well. But this one is a duology. It's Hair Burns My Candle. And I cannot think of the other one. But uh, this one is set in Edinburgh, I think. Yeah, Edinburgh in 1745. I am not big on the 1700s. I don't think I'm gonna even care too much for the 1800s. But I'm going to give this a go. I heard that it was really good. I do like Liz Curtis Higgs. Lix Curtis Higgs um non-fiction works so I definitely do want to try to get into her fictional works and um yeah we have this she is wearing a choker like I said um it's not a necklace but this was the only one that I really cared to actually read so yeah all right so the next book I'm gonna be reading is The Gilded Lady by Elizabeth Camden and this is the second book in the Hope and Glories trilogy I believe it's a trilogy um and it's following the sister I think her name is Caroline 
Caroline something the name is on the screen um me and Stephanie buddy read the first book which was the Spice King a while ago and we both loved the book so much the writing the era the way that they talked was so amazing so I'm excited to dive into this and follow up on Caroline because Caroline was I liked her but I didn't like her because I felt like she was a little petty at times especially with her older brother's romance but I'm excited to see how things go especially knowing that she was working um was it the president I don't think it was a president I forgot who it was that she was working with but um I'm excited to see where this romance goes and where the drama goes and if we get more information about I believe her brother's her other brother's name is Luke so um I'm excited for this buddy read with my sister Stephanie so we have that and um yeah so the final book is Resuscitating Evangelism and I don't think I have to talk about this too often but basically it is a book all about resuscitating evangelism and how we as a people not just evangelists in general if you guys don't know I am an ordained evangelist I was ordained a year ago in August so yeah it's been a year since I was um ordained but this book is talking about how the body of Christ as a whole should be evangelizing and sharing the gospel and it goes through things of why we don't evangelize and how we can evangelize and what's going on with the body of Christ and it's so so good I mean the first two chapters like gripped me to the core gripped me to the core and um it's only eight chapters long I could read this in eight days but this is a very meaty book and I don't want to fly through it too quickly um I mean like I'm literally like sitting here talking to the text I'm annotating heavily I am conversing with the book like I wrote in this margin I wrote over here I love writing in my book and talking to the text is what I call it um let me see chapter two I read chapter two but I didn't get a chance to do my color coding system yet so everything is like underlined and I wrote in it but I haven't gotten a chance to um really use my colors yet so I need to do that but um it's steeped in scripture which I love so I highly recommend even if you're not an evangelist to read this because it is so great and what I mean is even if you're not an evangelist like leader wise in church you are still supposed to be evangelizing the gospel so I would recommend this it's really good really meaty um you can read this in eight days you could take two months to read it three months four months however long you want to take to read it as you can see I'm taking a little longer than usual to read it but it's okay because it's still good but we have this book Okay, so I have a total of five definite reads. These four physical books along with The Gilded Lady by Elizabeth Camden. But I also have two additional books, which I'm actually excited to read. I'm excited to reread um, The Girl Behind the Red Rope because I truly enjoyed it. And I'm excited to dive back into Nine because I enjoyed that as well. And um, just to pick up on the foreshadowing and stuff like that. So that is about seven books. Five, six are physical books, right? So seven books here, six physical books, one ebook. And um, I will listen to audiobooks where I can find them um but I'm excited for this month of reading I'm excited for uh seeing what these books are going to do um yes I know it's the month of Halloween and someone probably will ask about my nails I mentioned this in another video I explained why my nails are like this I do not celebrate Halloween whatsoever like I've never celebrated it as a kid well no we don't celebrate it as adults as a kid my mom did let me dress up for school um she did let me go trick-or-treating as a kid because it was innocent back then nowadays i don't trust trick-or-treating or none of that um i don't let my son technically celebrate it but if his school is like letting the kids dress up in costumes the only costumes he really does is like mario black panther that's about it um he was probably like captain america and iron man and i think hulk one time um i want him to enjoy that time and I know some people who are Christians don't believe that they their kids should do that I am not one of those parents um I'm gonna let my son enjoy it to a certain extent um and then we gonna reel it in and not do it anymore I, I didn't celebrate Halloween for a long time after I think <laughs> once I got past fourth third grade I stopped celebrating celebrating in the sense of getting costumes and stuff like that I just didn't care to and even in um high school and college I just I didn't care to dress up I wore regular clothes and went to the parties so yeah the nails I bought them you guys know I cut my nails a while ago and I'm they're growing but I keep cutting them off and putting on these false nails so anytime you see my nails done they are falsies they're from the Kiss New York brand you can get them anywhere at your local drugstore um Walgreens Walmart Target places like that and they had three sets of Halloween ones um I got a burgundy set which is really nice they're like a nice burgundy color with a black and white marble design which I'm gonna save 
for um actually let me just grab them and show you guys because i know i'm gonna get questions so um let me grab them okay so they had multiple designs so these are limited edition um they're supposed to glow in the dark all of them glow in the dark somehow some way and they're like halloween-esque so i'm going to cover this because i know someone is probably going to say something but um here is the one that i got that's maroon with the like marble design i think it's really pretty i'm gonna wear this probably in december it gives me like those christmasy vibes um and then i have this orange one here um which i really really like and it's giving me november vibes so i plan to wear these in november and then the ones i currently have on are this set um and they only come with i think four or five accent nails like this um it has bats it has skulls it has a black cat it has a pumpkin it has a ghost and it has a coffin i'm a christian i know what the word of god says um these were the nails that i wanted to wear because i really like the holographic design and it is what it is okay so I hope that answers questions <laughs> i don't celebrate halloween i do watch halloween movies um not really because i'm not a horror person anyway i can't watch horror like it scares me to a t and um i've had experiences with spirits and i'll probably do a whole testimony video on that i actually never thought about sharing that but um when i was younger there, there's something with my family where me and my young when me and my siblings when we were younger we all were able to see spirits and i'm just gonna leave it at that and i'll do a whole video on that and explaining that um we are gifted and that's pretty much all i'm gonna say so yeah as far as horror i don't care for horror as a genre i don't read it i don't watch it i have a few like maybe four or five horror books on my my like my bookshelf that i have i've had for maybe six years and haven't read any of them so i'm trying to get into the genre but i'm not a big fan of them however i do watch supernatural i did watch buffy the vampire slayer gr growing up i did watch charmed and stuff like that um the old school charm not the new not the new one because the new one is a little weird um i used to watch sabrina the teenage witch not the new sabrina because that sabrina i tried to watch it and it it scared me okay so i watched you know the cute sabrina the teenage witch now granted witches in general are no good and i'm, I'm gonna do a whole video on it because every time i talk about certain things there are some people that like to combat with me argue with me um i am not one of those christians that will be all prim and proper and read only christian fiction and watch only christian movies and only listen to christian music and i still enjoy life okay i enjoy life god has not convicted me to stop watching things he has not convicted me to stop listening to music you guys know with music for me now i cannot listen to music for too long because once my spirit gets bothered my ears literally ring so um music it's not that i cut it all out but i have a limit to how much i can take <laughs> from hip-hop and rap and all that um movies I, i'm not really bothered because i don't really watch movies like that so yeah i pretty much watch anime which is a whole nother issue that some people may have a problem with but i watch japanese cartoons that's what i prefer um i watch chinese cartoons that's what i prefer um so yeah this video is going left field real quick but i just wanted to explain the nails so i know somebody's gonna ask me about these nails um and they're not coming off for like another three weeks i keep these nails on for three weeks so yeah the boxes always say seven days oh it doesn't say on this box but normally oh yeah it says seven day wear so on the boxes, it'll tell you like it'll only lasts for like seven days if you use the tabs. It comes with tabs, it comes with glue. I don't use the glue in the box. I use actual Kiss nail glue from the store, the brush on one. And I try to keep my nails on for anywhere for two to three weeks. Um, If one kind of like pops off, I will glue it right back on to last until all of them start to come off. So yeah, hopefully that answers questions about these nails. Um, Again, they're cute to me. It is what it is. If you have a problem with it, I am sorry, but... I don't want any negativity on my channel because I've noticed that some people are starting to get real negative in the comments concerning certain things. Um, and to each their own, you can definitely have an opinion, but do not try to put your convictions on me and I will not put my convictions on you. I've said this before. Um, there was, there has been a lot of going back and forth with my Bible journaling video where I showed my Bible journal and why I, and I explained that I don't personally like to draw in my Bible. There are some people who come on and say that I'm wrong for feeling the way I feel. No, I have personal convictions about drawing in my Bible. However, I love looking at people who do Bible journal the art way. That is beautiful. But for me, journal correlates to writing. I'm a writer. That's what I do. I took art class for a year. Um, I did good in it, but I'm not an artist in that sense. So, just wanted to put that out there okay okay so that is it for this video i didn't mean to rant towards the end but i just wanted to get it out there because i know that i have a lot of new subscribers which i am almost at 4,000 subscribers which is 
no words like i'm mind blown that i'm literally almost at 4,000 subscribers and you guys know i don't do this for the money i don't do it for the subscriber count i don't i do this because god has gifted me to do it <laughs> um and he has commanded that i do it so i do it um and i enjoy making videos i enjoy youtube as a whole youtube has some problem areas here and there every community on youtube has issues um and when i mean community i mean like the beauty community the makeup community the beauty community the book community the christian community the art community the gaming like every community within youtube has its issues but um i enjoy the fact that youtube is a platform where you can share your passion share your loves without um reserve and i love doing that here especially with the christian community i love the fact that i'm able to share the word of god through my different passions and different loves um so yeah that is it i'm gonna go if you guys have read any of these books let me know if you guys want reading blogs on any of these books let me know um definitely pearl in the sand is already up like i said click the on the screen i might do a reading blog for the girl behind the red robe because i definitely did enjoy it when i read it so i might do a reading blog for this um, I'm not going to do a reading blog for Left Behind at all because I'm just not. So, we'll see. I might have, um, definitely going to have one reading blog already up. So, I might have two more reading blogs this month. Um, and I'll probably post those on, um, random days if I don't have anything. Like, if I already have something set to post on Wednesday, I'll post some more ra random days. But, um, yeah, expect more reading blogs to come. And that is it for this video. Oh, my sweater. I talked about it in my previous video. Now, mind you, I'm recording all these videos on the same day. Okay just um I'm, I'm i'm both recording because you you guys know virtual learning is a hassle so um the sweater i'm wearing is from sarite apparel on instagram it's faith can move mountains and it's in the light pink color this sweater is so comfortable i was outside earlier recording my video for friday on for igtv and um it's real breezy outside i'm not a call i don't like cold weather whatsoever i don't like hot weather i don't like cold weather i was born in the spring i'm a june baby um so i prefer that nice in between weather um i get cold real fast and i stay cold i'm not anemic which is the funny part like i used to be anemic i'm no longer anemic after i have my son but i'm just consistently cold my feet stay cold um so i normally get cold outside without a sweater or like a a zip up sweater is what i mean but um i was really nice and cozy outside and in my video sat outside for a good hour or so talking to the camera so, yeah, but I'm going to go. I said that like three times already. So if you guys have any comments, questions or concerns, leave them down below. If you email me, just know I'm going to get to your email. I know a bunch of you have emailed me. I have read your emails. I just haven't gotten a chance to respond. So those who have emailed me, just know you will see, you will get a response from me soon. I have read every last one of the emails that were sent to me. And um, I truly appreciate you guys contacting me, whether it be a personal tip, whether it be um, you asking me a question or wanting more information on something. I'm always here for that. Um, so, yeah, I am working on some stuff. I'm always working on some stuff, obviously. But um, I'm working on some stuff that I want to share with you guys soon. But I'm probably going to wait until 2021 to talk to you guys about that further. Um, we'll see how the rest of this year goes before I launch it and talk to you guys about it. But um, a website is coming soon for DOI. It is coming soon. Um, I'm working on a bunch of stuff. So, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I like talking to you guys, but I'm going to go now. So, bye, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video.